So today was really about um, a, a spaces that we create for critical conversation. And this particularly we're talking today about the water crisis in Cape Town. But for those who are not aware, Cape Town is facing one of the most severe drought in its history. And with the, with the large population, the implications on the water users are quite severe that could potentially affect the economy of this country. Cape Town is a significant contributor to the economy. The conversation today was really about what is this water crisis we're talking about? What do we need to do as water consumers and so on? And bringing thought leaders into this kind of spaces to, to feel like we chart their way forward for consumers. So a lot of the work that Green Cape is primarily tasked with is growing the water sector, um, but obviously within the current context of the drought, a lot of work that we are doing is trying to help businesses adapt to the water crisis, help, helping them think through solutions um, and uh, put them in, in contact with pro providers. That's a lot of work. We do. We've had three years of really bad rainfall and then 2017 was the worst we've ever had. So I think that was, I think that's beyond any of the challenges relating to governance, etc. Primarily it has been driven by, by weather and climate. I think whether, as to whether this is climate change, is this, is this what we are seeing? I don't think the climatologists have got to an agreement on that yet. But is there um, an agreement that this is a one in a hundred year drought? Uh, I think and, it's, and it's generally, what, a, what a, in a one in a hundred year drought means. It's it's a one in three hundred or one in four hundred year drought. Oh, wow. Those are the mm -hmm. those are variables that <laughs> most people are working with at this point. Right, the drought isn't over. Right, we may be looking at a one in one thousand year drought, whatever the case may be. We don't know yet. But the way that our water systems are built is that they're built for a one in fifty year drought. So it's called a assurance of supply. Uh, the city of Cape Town has a ninety eight percent assurance of supply, which is obviously the one in 50. Uh, agriculture has a much lower assurance of supply, they have a 70% assurance of supply. You can't build your way out of a drought and I think that recognition that number one, we can't only rely on our dams anymore, we have to find something that is better drought proof and climate proof. And what is that thing? Well, that's a variety of solutions, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So I think, I think the key thinking that is emerging uh, from the city at the moment is, is desalination is part of our future. Um, it's going to be not at the scale that we possibly thought of originally, but we're probably looking at about maybe 100 to 150 megalitres per, megalitres per day, millimetres per day. I found it very informative. It's, I always like to hear more background information than what you, than what you read in the newspaper. So Claire and Mao did a very good job uh, to get that new information out. The one, one thing that I am going to take away from me um, that I'm really grateful to have had is that the talks are happening at, at a level that the city is um, working internationally, that the people are conversing, the people who can actually do something about it are talking on a much higher level than just locally. Um, they're talking internationally, they're talking with other cities in the world who can actually give some advice, give some information, give some technical know-how. They're talking across the board. There, there are complete new trends that are going to happen and they're starting to happen already. I believe that probably the government and municipality are going to have to learn how to integrate with those rather than necessarily try to control them. I think we're going to look back on this as an incredibly transformative process. I think change is painful and we're in the midst of an incredibly painful period. But what we're seeing right now is adaptation in process. And I think that our society, from business to households to government, will be changed forever because of what we've experienced in the last year or so.